Welcome to the first Earth Medieval video. Earth Medieval is a distant future version of Earth where epic fantasy is made real by sci-fi means. I've been working on this world building project for about eight years now, and it all stemmed from a challenge I gave myself. First, transform Earth, our world as we know it, into an epic fantasy world. And second, make that transformation somewhat plausible. To meet this challenge of creating a plausible, epic, fantasy-esque Earth, I wanted three things to happen. First, our world needed to become medieval, because that's the time period where traditional fantasy takes place. Second, our world needed mythical creatures. And third, our world needed to develop a magic system. First, in order for Earth to fall back into the Dark Ages and become medieval once again, there needed to be a huge war one that covered the whole globe. The war goes by many names, the End War, the Burning War, but basically it's World War III, and no corner of Earth is left untouched. Entire cities are razed to the ground, and only a fraction of the world's population survives. In the aftermath of the war, the ruins of the old world are buried, flooded, or overgrown. And in the new world, the survivors try to pick up the pieces and decide how to move forward. A movement called the Natrio Movement grows popular. This is the idea that the survivors shouldn't look longingly back at the technology that was lost in the end war. Because after all, it was technology that brought all this destruction. Now that most everything is back to zero, humanity can start with a clean slate, go back to its roots. So people start working with their hands again, start working the land again, not just out of necessity, but out of a belief that this is the correct step forward. Of course, not everyone likes this idea. There are those called technas who think that humanity shouldn't throw away its advancements. And so there is a divide that splits the technas and the natrios. Over time, the natrios end up winning out and the technas decide to take their beliefs elsewhere to a large space station that survived the war and is still orbiting Earth. Those who remain on Earth purge the world of any remnants of advanced technology. 600 years later, human civilization looks much different with kingdoms and dominions built of wood and stone, a civilization where blacksmiths work the forges, horses plow fields, and swords keep the peace. And there's a deep-seated fear of the technology of the ancient people, so advancement has stagnated. This is the post-apocalyptic -post setting where the world takes place. And in this new earth, medieval, there are mythical beasts roaming the wilds. So how did they get there? Go back to when earth was at its peak of technological prowess. Scientists are conducting bioengineering experiments, kind of like Jurassic Park. They create creatures out of myth for entertainment purposes to be featured in zoos and theme parks. These creatures don't look exactly like how they're depicted in traditional illustrations because some combinations just don't work well. Take the griffin, for example. Scientists have a hard time making traditional griffins since it's difficult to combine a mammal, a lion, with a bird, an eagle. So the scientists come up with something close. But it's a creature that looks more like a dinosaur eagle than it does a lion eagle. But still, it's called a griffin because of its wings and four other appendages. There are also dragons, but these dragons don't have wings. They're rather a combination of Komodo dragons and crocodiles, just much bigger. During the end war, as civilization comes crashing down, a lot of these bioengineered creatures escape their enclosures. At first, they're feral, wandering the ruins much like stray dogs. But as time goes by, they venture out into the wilds and grow acclimated to the environment. As the natural world limps on and tries to recover during the aftermath of the end war, I picture these bioengineered creatures adjusting, perhaps slightly better than natural creatures. In fact, they get bigger and stronger from generation to generation out in the wild. And after a few centuries, these creatures have become natural species in their habitats. So that's how Earth Medieval gets its mythical, or rather, once mythical, creatures. As for the magic system in this world, that would be the technology of the past. The people of Earth Medieval have heard about the ancient people and the magic they possessed. How they could summon light in a dark room. How they could speak to people on the other side of the world. And how they could fly in enchanted vessels. But such great power came at a cost and brought up demons of hellfire who threw the world into its catastrophic war and burned civilization to the ground. 
So the advanced technology of the past is feared as demonic magic, and anyone caught trying to resurrect it is taken away by tech hunters called rooks, never to be seen again. Of course, just because something is illegal doesn't stop people from trying to use it. There are closet warlocks and witches who venture out into the overgrown and buried ruins of the ancient world, seeking forbidden knowledge and gathering any bits of technology worth salvaging. This isn't so much a land of sword and sorcery as it is a land of sword and circuitry. Earth medieval is what I envision our world to look like if it turned into an epic fantasy world by a sci-fi, if not somewhat plausible, means. What I've described here is just a brief overview of the world that I've been building. If you'd like to take a deeper dive into Earth Medieval, you can check out my book, Angel from the Rust, a novel that takes place in this world. I've included a link to the book in the description. Of course, if you enjoyed this video and learning about this world, please like and subscribe. And if you have any questions about Earth Medieval, please post them in the comments. I have volumes I could say about this world building project, and since I plan to make more videos, your comments and questions will help give me an idea of what I should talk about and where to go next. So thanks for watching and learning about Earth Medieval.